The loudest voice on Showtime chronicles how Roger Ailes built the media behemoth that is Fox News, as well as his professional demise when he was ousted from the company. It features a chilling score by Marcello Zavos, and he joins us today. I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and Marcello, the first uh, question I want to ask is, what factors do you take into consideration when building a score around someone as monstrous as the way Ailes is portrayed? Well, that's that's really uh, first of all, thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm so so happy to to be part of the show and be able to talk about uh, the loudest voice. Um, um, I um, I think one of the the things that we found out very early on is that as monstrous as Roger Ailes was, we all, always had to have the music from his point of view. Whenever we try to deviate from that, the music seemed to not work so well. So in some ways we had to find a way to kind of be removed and somehow not, not judge him and simply try to tell his story. And a lot of the, the, the story until, especially the first few episodes, it's, it's really, from his point of view as what he thought he was doing as opposed to what he you know what what we the result that we saw and so the music had to kind of be somehow sympathetic and find sympathy in in that you know monstrous character and that was that was really quite a quite a challenge i have to say uh you know almost like that's when i feel like composers almost become like actors you have to kind of sort of inhabit this character that you might personally despised, but you still have to try to see their point of view and musically portray them from their own point of view. Uh, so which instruments uh, did you find yourself relying on for this score? Because it seemed like it was a lot of uh, percussion and string, but which ones were the ones that, uh, that you found yourself relying on for the score and why did you gravitate towards those, uh, towards those instruments? Yes, I would say that the main instruments were in the uh, percussion and strings, low strings in particular, the cello was very important. I mean, there's something about that low kind of baritone uh, range that, that seemed and, and the, the sort of the, the gravitas of the instrument. We, we used that instrument very prominently on the main title and, and, and a lot of his music was very cello heavy. And the percussion was really, um, a combination of a lot of very processed electronic percussion. It felt like something about the world of TV that felt like it needed to be sort of synthetic. So we really processed the percussion a lot and, and made this warbled kind of heartbeat type of textures that worked both for the times when he was driving and kind of driving, I mean, driving the story and building Fox News, and eventually the score becomes, as the season unfolds, more and more it goes from a drama and a sort of biopic drama towards psychological thriller and ultimately almost psychological horror. And, um, and it felt to me like that low, low range of strings and cello and bass and percussion were, were the right thing. We also have a fair amount of piano for the more tender emotional moments. Um, and yeah, and that was that was really it. Um, but a lot of a lot of electronics as well on top of it. And I really like to treat the instruments uh, with a lot of effects and a lot of processing um, to kind of give it a more, especially in a story like this where it's such a twisted character and such a twisted narrative. A lot of the score really feels very subdued, and I felt that that enhanced a lot of the scenes, especially some of the more horrific scenes. Um, yes. and, and I'm curious as, as, as to whether that was an intentional choice on your part. Well, you know, sometimes my, my, my thinking is um, I've had the opportunity to work with in projects with amazing actors, and, and uh, Russell Crowe certainly being at the very top of this list. Um, and what I find is that if they go big, <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to go big with the music. And you don't want to necessarily replicate what's on the screen. You want to enhance it. And I find that sometimes 
if they're going big, it's almost like when somebody's very mad and if you just talk very quietly back to them, they're going to get even madder and it's going to be make their, their anger even more apparent. So, so the approach of less is more is, is in general an approach that I, I take with me on a lot of projects that I do. I feel, I feel like that's, that kind of emotional modulation is very important for me because if the music pushes the performance, you might ultimately transform what's an incredible performance like what Russell Crowe did into melodrama. So we always had to really hold back and let him lead and not, the, not let the music lead. Let the music follow this character. And, you know, he was, he owned that character. He really did. And it felt like we just needed to support it, but we didn't need to kind of push it any further because the character was a very over the top character to begin with. And, and, and Russell Crowe really went there and was, was big and, and loud and angry. And, and I felt like the music, it's almost like alchemy, you know, you kind of, don't want to necessarily throw more fire into fire and you throw something else that hopefully will flam, will, will, will make the flames kind of get stronger, if that makes sense. No, that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. uh, during, this, during this project, did you ever have a piece composed for a scene based on what was on the page, but then when you uh, saw what, the, uh, what, what it actually looked like after it had been shot, felt that you needed to scrap that composition and start over? Yeah, that, 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 that happens a fair amount. You know, I mean, I think in the end, the picture is, is, is what really uh, determines what it, what it can take. You know, you might, it, it really has a lot to do with the direction and the performances. Um, so I, I try to, I, I write, I like to write to scripts and I like to write away from picture. But then I also spend a lot of time experimenting with different themes. <clears throat> and sometimes it's not very, what you think is going to work might not be the right thing. And, and, and I really enjoy sometimes having a real counterpoint to kind of, as your last question, you know, of, of going small when they're going big. So I feel like until I really see what's on the screen, I don't really commit to anything. I really need to see how, not only how it was shot, but how it's cut, and also have an idea of how the music might be used and might be mixed. If they're, you know, thinking of it as a very, very quiet scene, you have to kind of adjust what the music is going to do. And sometimes, like in some of the later episodes, when, when you have like some of the big rallies and the Trump rallies and, the, you know, build that wall and all of that stuff, then the music really needed to get big there. Uh, but I find that I really need to see it. I, it's not complete until I can really see what's shot and how it's cut. Were there any parts of the series that were uh, more difficult uh, than others to write compositions for? Yes, I think some of the toughest, more, most challenging uh, scenes um, were the ones that dealt with the harassment, particularly the harassment of Laurie Loon, who's, you know, the main sort of uh, character that is harassed by him. I mean, that's not to say there were hundreds, but that's the one that the show really focuses on until we get to Gretchen Carlson. But you really see the, the, the depths of his sort of sadistic kind of uh, behavior with her. And those were really tough because we couldn't make it be sad because we, whenever we tried to deviate from him, the music felt like it didn't, it, it wasn't ringing true. So I ended up tapping into something quite horror-like and it was more, I mean, I have done a little bit of psychological horror in my career, but I feel like in some ways this is the strongest, most horror-like uh, project I've, I've been involved in because First of all, because it was true and it's not a monster coming out of the closet. It's a real person that really did this. And I find that to, to, to find the right modulation of twisted sound of what this guy is doing. And I mean, he thinks, uh, you know, he thinks that, that that woman and those women were, were into him and he's completely delusional. But if we try to play the sadness of the scene, it didn't 
it didn't quite work. Another example of that was on the second episode that deals with 9-11. If we try to play and, and kind of score the tragedy of 9-11, it just didn't work. Uh, we had to kind of play it from his point of view, which he saw 9-11 as more of, a, of an opportunity. He saw an, a, a giant opening for this thing that has been his, his dream and his ambition of kind of taking over the, the, the TV waves. So 9-11 was, we had to really hold back and kind of, especially during the actual attack, played like the excitement that Roger Ailes felt as opposed to the, the horror and the sadness that we, that we all experienced. So that was, that was quite tricky uh, to do. I would say in those two cases where, where, were some of the ones that I really had to spend a lot of time until to get it just right. Uh, you've been doing scores for television programs since around 2010. Uh, and with the way that television currently is, uh, do you find that there's uh, much difference between scoring for a film and for a television show? The only difference is that the amount of music that you have to produce, you know, for TV is obviously much bigger and actually I feel like in some ways, as far as episodic television, the loudest voice is the closest that I came to my work in film. One of the big and kind of uh, big, big factors in that is that we, we had an orchestra and we scored everything with an orchestra, all of the episodes. And that's something that even in, in, in this big kind of high profile shows like Ray Donovan, The Affair, I've done a little bit, but like it would be in the last episode of the season or in the pilot, but never the whole thing. So this was one where, where I just said, you know, this is going to be a movie and that's how we're going to approach it. And I think that, the, you know, those two paths of film and television, when I started, were already starting to, 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 to merge. But the, I feel like over from 2010, over that, that decade of, you know, of the teens is when really TV became what it is. And I think at this point, there's absolutely no difference in the quality and the artistic merit of television, which was kind of a different story when I started. Um, there was almost a stigma, you know, about it. Like if you're a composer, well, if you're a film composer, you shouldn't really be doing TV. Now it's almost, it has almost turned itself now because I feel like TV is where it's at and, and, and film composers are, are, want to get, get into television. There's very few that have not already kind of, you know, gotten into it, uh, to some extent. And I, I find that for me, this was the project where the last little bit of the wall was, was broken between television and film and, and for me, really now it's a matter of story and a matter of trying to understand what the story is and what the story demands. Well, uh, 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 thank you so much for joining us, Marcello. Uh, wish you all the best this Emmy season. And to all our viewers, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to see all our latest content. And don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the best forecasters in Hollywood. Thanks again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.